Hey guys, welcome to Sandals Church where we are all about this vision of being real. And if you've been watching some of our YouTube videos and maybe you wanna dive deeper into this vision of being real, or maybe even asking that question, what does this vision of being real look like in my life? Head on over to sandalschurch.tv. But we're so glad that you joined us today. Enjoy the message. What's going on, everybody? It's good to be with you today. As you heard, I'm Pastor Fredo. I'm usually at uh, Palm Avenue, but I'm thankful uh, to be with you here at Hunter Park. Y'all are some special people. I was here a few weeks ago, and I'm thankful to be back as we uh, continue in this series called Confused. How many of you guys have been enjoying this series, Confused? That's great. That's great. Yeah, we are after clarity. We are finding clarity and wanting to find clarity in an unclear world, and clarity around things like the gospel, Christianity, Faith, what, is it, what does it mean to actually follow Jesus in our world today? That is what we're after as we walk through the book of Galatians. And the topic today for us is freedom. And the question on the table for all of us is what is real freedom? Because it's something that you and I want. In our world today, man, you, you can't think of maybe a better calling for anyone that they would be free, right? That they would be true to themselves and live a life like that. And this passage today has everything to say about what real freedom actually is. And so let's read together here from Galatians 5, and then I'm going to pray for us. Paul writes this, For you were called to be free, brothers and sisters. Only don't use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out, or you will be consumed by one another. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. This is God's word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for being here with us today. And I pray, God, that you would speak to us powerfully from your word. Would you give us eyes to see? And would you give us ears to hear what it means to actually be free and how we experience that in our lives? And we pray all these things in Jesus' name, amen. Now, I know some of you guys, probably all of you guys, have your favorite song. You got a track, maybe you've had it for years, maybe it's a more recent one, but when it comes on, man, it grabs you, right? Whether it's through the car stereo, you got it in your headphones, there's something about our favorite music or our favorite song where the line is said or the melody hits and we just like, yes, that's me. That's where I'm at, right? Art and music has a way to connect us to what's real or what we want to see actually happen in our lives or what we hope for in our lives. And This actually happened to me just the other night. On Friday night, my wife Ashley and I, we were able to sneak out for a little date night, which is great, because as young parents, man, those those can be gone really fast. But we were able to hand off the kids, God have mercy on my parents, and we snuck out. We took a drive down to Los Angeles, and we uh, got to go to a concert at the Greek Theater. I don't know if you guys have been to the Greek Theater, but it's an amazing place to be. Outside venue, just beautiful time. It, it's not always the case, right, that you drive to Los Angeles, spend a day out there, and say, I had a great day in LA. But that night was a magical night. We had a great day in Los Angeles. And the person that we went to see is one of our favorite guys, one of our favorite artists. His name is John Bellion. And man, this guy, he, he's everything that <laughs> I'm just not. Like, he could, he could sing. I cannot sing. Um, he can dance. He, he can uh, play almost any instrument that's on stage. He can rap. I mean, he, he is the full package of what you want to see in an artist. 
And that night he played one of my favorite songs. It's called Blue. And the song Blue is really a love song to, to his wife. And, and it grabbed me, man. That night I, I was moved. I don't know if you guys go to concerts and you're like, man, I felt like I encountered God or something. Or you just had that kind of emotional moment, man. I had that as he sung this song. And his opening lines are this. Messing with my pride, thinking any time you could just get up and go. Then I realized what the hell is love if you're in complete control. You see why I love it so much is because he's at something, he's addressing something that is very true about us. We want to be personally free, but we also want to experience real love in our life. And what John is saying in this, in this song is that, man, I got to humble myself. If I, want, if I want this actual love, then how can I remain in control? In other words, how can I continue to just be someone who does what I want, who does what I please? And that problem that he brings out so beautifully and artistically in this song is a problem that you and I experience. Everyone really does. Because we want to be free and we want to experience love that changes our lives. We might even say that, man, to be free, to be yourself is one of the greatest callings you can give to anyone. Right? People are after that today. And the Apostle Paul in this passage says there's a way to experience it. There's a way to have real freedom, the kind of freedom John's after and the kind of freedom that I think every single one of us is after. But in order to have it, there are two things that we need to be freed from. The first thing that we need to be freed from or that we can be freed from is living for ourselves. Living for ourselves. Paul says this there in Galatians 5.13. Don't use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. In other words, your, your selfishness or your sinful desires. Don't abuse the freedom God has given you to live for yourself and do the things that you only want to do. Now pause for a second. Why is that a problem? Because for many of us, right, being free is doing that exact thing. Being free is the ability to live for yourself, to make your own decisions, to do what you see as right for yourself. Y'all remember that song a number of years ago, The Disney Prophet, She Got It Right, Queen Elsa, everyone went wild for the song, Let It Go. Remember what she says? No right, no wrong, no rules, I'm free. None of y'all know that? What is wrong? Man, I saw grown men at Disneyland cry six years ago with their, their hands lifted high, their tears coming down, let it go. What is wrong with us, man? But what Elsa was after is kind of true, though. Because I think... Deep down inside, we kind of know, man, to be your own person is a liberating thing. It's called individualism. And there are some positive things that have come out of it, right? Because God makes not just groups of people, but he makes individuals like you. And you have value. You have worth. And individualism also kind of helps to, to break us out of maybe traditional structures that have harmed people. So there is some value. And at first glance and at first hearing, it sounds like to be yourself, to be true to yourself, just don't hurt anyone, is liberating. It is freeing. But I think there's gotta be more to freedom than just that. In other words, if we tell people, well, just search within yourself, find your strongest desires, whatever, whatever's down there, pull that out and live like that, and you'll be free. You'll be yourself. You'll be true to yourself. I think that's too hard. And in the end, I think it's more enslaving than it is freeing. And here's why, because our desires are competing. Think about it. Think about yourself for a second. You got a lot of competing desires down there. On one day, you want to be this and do this. On another day, you kind of want to be this and do this and move there and maybe have this family. Right? We're, we're kind of conflicted. There's a competition. So what desires are you going to choose? And so freedom can't just be the absence of all the rules. Freedom has to be the presence of the right rules. That's what freedom is. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Here are my competing desires. For example, I love to eat sandwiches. I got a strong desire every single day of my life to eat a good sandwich. Doesn't matter what day of the week or what hour of the day, I'll eat a sandwich. I'm ready for a sandwich right now. <laughs> I've been here all morning saying the same thing all morning. I'm ready, we can go right now to Antone's right there on the corner of Brockton, get ourselves a nice Italian sandwich, ask for the garlic bread as the bread, that's good. That is a strong desire I currently have right now. I'm not making that up. But listen, I gotta face the facts. 
I'm 33. Your metabolism apparently changes. And I, I kind of want to be a little less thick than I currently am right now. Because this light doesn't help me. So I, I want to drop a few. And I want to be healthy. Because I'm married. And I want to live a long time with Ashley. I want us to grow old. I want us to be able to sit somewhere on a bench and just be in our diapers as old people. <laughs> that's another, that's our, that's our retirement plan. Just there, sitting there, eating a sandwich. <laughs> that's what I want. I got kids too. I want to see them grow. I want to see my son Eli be way better than I ever was. I want my daughter, who's one man, maybe one day she wants to be married. I want to walk her down the aisle as her dad. Hand her off to a man who can love her the way I love her, love her the way God loves her. I want to be healthy for that. I want to make it to see that. And so if that's the case, then I got to learn to say no to certain desires and say yes to the right ones. And maybe imagine for just a moment that freedom, again, isn't the absence of all the rules so that you can do what you want, but it's the presence of the right ones, the ones that are actually going to create more freedom. Why? Because we have conflicting desires. But secondly, the culture changes all the time, right? And we're being told regularly, be yourself, just don't hurt anyone. But what if their story changes? And, and check this out, man, I remember uh, transitioning out of high school, I was going into college, it was Thanksgiving, we had family over, and uh, I won't say which one of my family members told me this, but I'm sitting across the table, and he said, Fredo, don't let anyone tell you how to live your life moving forward. You make your own decisions. Now, ironically, what did this person just do to me? He did the very thing he said no one should do to you, right? In other words, in trying to tell people, don't let anyone tell you how to live your life, they've just told you how you should live your life. And so it's actually more enslaving than you might think. It doesn't really set us free in the end. Because what if their story changes? What if their understanding of what freedom looks like changes? Are you gonna change? Freedom's gotta be more than that. It's gotta be more than living for ourselves. And even think about yourself for a moment, right? We change all the time. Think for a second. Did you peak in middle school? Like, was your life everything you wanted it to be in middle school? Were you as wise as you are now? Have your tastes changed? Because then you got in high school and you're like, man, thank God I'm not who I was in middle school. And then as high school went along, you got older, and in college, you're like, man, thank God no one knows me in college from my high school days. And then maybe you got out of college, you're at work now, you're like, thank God no one saw a yearbook. Why? Because almost like every few years, we look back and say, that was an idiot. Listen to the way I sounded. Look, look how I dressed. What did we do? My God, what was wrong with me? We are constantly changing, right? Maybe in a month, you'll be like, why did I think like that? Why did I date that person? What, what was I thinking? We are constantly changing as people. And so it, it would be too hard just to say, be yourself. Live life the way you want to live it. You're always on the move. You'd be like a hamster on a wheel. It's never going to stop. But you see, there's another group, though, that Paul is also addressing here in this passage. When he says, don't abuse your freedom. In other words, don't take advantage of your freedom for yourself. For your sin. Some of you in here are just like the church in Galatia, right? Some of the people there said it was Jesus and the law, Jesus and law. In other words, you trust in Jesus, but you also got to obey the law of Moses. We call that a legalist. But then there's others who say it's Jesus and lawlessness. Do whatever you want, right? In the end, if God loves me, if God is going to forgive me, why can't I just do whatever I want? You kind of pigeonhole God into like tricking him to be gracious to you, right? If, if God is a gracious God, isn't he going to forgive me so I can do what I want? If he is so loving, if he's just kind of this distant, all-creating, all-loving God, then why don't I just live like hell? Because at the end of the day, Pastor Fredo, he's got to forgive me, doesn't he? But you see, that's the wrong question. You shouldn't be asking, won't he forgive me? What you should be asking is, do you even understand forgiveness? The question isn't, will he be gracious to me? The question is, do you know what grace is? Because if you did, you wouldn't take advantage of it. You wouldn't be so flippant with your life. 
You, you can't walk around and say, well, sin cost me nothing when sin cost God everything. What did it cost him? What did sin cost the father? It cost him the life of his son. It cost God everything. That's how much sin costs. And yet some of us today walk around as if it costs us nothing. Like, you're okay with God. The truth is, you may not even know God. So some of us in here today got decisions to make on what we're doing with our freedom, what we're doing with God's grace, what we're doing with his forgiveness. Is it changing you? Is it shaping you? Because if it isn't, let go of that kind of Christianity. Let go of that kind of religion. and Begin to wrestle with what real freedom actually is because it's got to be more than just living for ourselves. The second thing, though, that Paul says we can be freed from is living for other people. Notice what he says there in Galatians 5.15. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out, or you will be consumed by one another. Consumed means destroyed. Paul is saying, man, some of you are eating each other. You're biting each other, devouring each other. You're consuming each other, man. This, this doesn't sound like church. This sounds like stranger things. But for some of you, though, this has been your past in church, right? Like, you don't need stranger things to visualize this. You just gotta rewind the tape because you have been bitten. You've been consumed by other churches, whether it's their pastor, the church staff, a church member, in fact, I know probably some of you are even a little hesitant to, to be all in here at Sandals Church because of the wounds that you have from the past. Because it is true that inside church, you get the best of people and you get the worst of people. It's how it is. Which is why in one sentence, he could say, love your neighbor as yourself, and then in the next, why are you biting each other? Because it comes out of us. When we live for other people, we consume them. We eat them because we either take what we need from them or they take from us what they need for themselves. It's a dog-eat kind of world. And the reason why Paul says this is the case, keep reading with me now, in verse 26. Let us not become conceited. I want you to circle that word conceited. We're gonna come back to it in just a second. Provoking one another and envying one another. These words are crucial words. You wanna know why? Because provoking and envying, they summarize almost our entire experience as we relate to people. See, someone who provokes you is someone who challenges you. And someone who challenges you is someone who kind of stands over you, looks down on you in this kind of prideful posture. I'm better than you. You're not like me. Look at you. Look what you do, look what you say, look how you dress. Look how you design your home. Look at the crappy vacations you go on. Not like in that photo, past, that's provoking. But then envying, it's kind of the opposite. You don't look down on people, envy is jealousy. In other words, you're looking up at them. And that's what Paul is saying is because of the way that we live for other people, we spend almost our entire lives either looking down on people or looking up at them. And it's a vicious, destructive roller coaster that we're on. Right, some of you don't really get on rides anymore. You can't do Six Flags, but you can be on your couch just scrolling through social media on a vicious roller coaster ride of conceit, going up and down, measuring people. Am I better than that person? Yeah. Am I worse than them? Yeah. And it's terrible. And Paul roots this kind of behavior in that word conceit, which means empty. Listen now, conceit means you are empty of praise. To be a conceited person is to be a person who is empty of praise. In other words, you need approval. You need love. You need affirmation. Because at the very root, your greatest fear, listen to me now, because I think this is true of all of us, our greatest fear is not so much that other people would hate us. Our greatest fear is that other people would ignore us. To be a conceited person deep down is someone who is convinced that what they do means nothing and who they are is worthless. 
We are terrified of being ignored. So like me, follow me, listen to me, spend time with me, do anything you want to me except ignore me. I don't want to be ignored. And when you really think about it, isn't that what hell is? Hell is a place for people who have spent their whole life ignoring God. And so you know what God does on the last day? He ignores them forever. And that terrifies us. And so we spend our lives craving praise, trying to fill that emptiness with the approval we think we need. And friends, that's called bondage. That's not freedom. And we spend our lives doing it. And you can do that as a Christian or a non-Christian, right? I do it as a pastor. I'll tell you how. Uh, it's summertime now, we're in the middle of July. And usually pastors leave, right? Get much needed rest, that's what Pastor Matt's doing. That's how y'all got stuck with me. <laughs> Pastor Matt got his toe somewhere in the sand, like he's chilling. And you're left with me. But I think we'll be all right today. Uh, but listen, I get to get away too. Once in a while, I don't go to my work on Sundays. And I attend another church. But listen, I'll be honest with you. As a pastor who occasionally teaches, it's hard to listen to other preachers. It's hard to listen to other teachers. In fact, if you are a pastor visiting us today, I'm sure you might have already experienced this a little bit as I got up and you're like, who the heck is this clown? But I'll be sitting in another church listening to the dude or whoever's teaching. And then I kind of pause. I'm pretty sure I'm better than that guy. <laughs> like I got it a little bit more than that person does. Or out of envy, I'm gonna never be able to do that. I'll never be able to talk like that. Never be able to communicate with that kind of power. That's where we find ourselves. That's where I'm at. Why? Because I am empty of praise. You see, you can be free but still return to your chains, still return to the bondage, and you're really not free, you just switched prison cells. You might have stopped living for yourself, but you're living for other people now, and that's just as dangerous. But you know what, the good news is this, the good news is that the gospel of Jesus gives us a way out, because the gospel says that Jesus, who is God, is the only person who is worthy of all praise, and full of all praise, and instead of keeping it, he empties himself of it so that he can live and die for you and make you free. That's the gospel. So what the gospel does is the gospel frees us from obsessing over ourselves. And for just a moment, that mirror that we have spent our life looking into is no longer a mirror but a window a window that we can see through into a world that is much bigger than ourselves for the very first time. And that, friends, is what freedom is. Freedom is the ability to look away from yourself and turn to another person. And you see, here's the secret that real free people know. Free people know that freedom isn't about them. Your freedom is not about you. It's about the good of other people. Which is why Paul says, we can, listen now, if you're taking note, we can be freed to give ourselves in love. Look what he says there in verse 14. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, I don't think the Bible's telling us that we need to love ourselves. It assumes that we can do that already, right? <laughs> Most of us have no problem loving ourselves. generally. At times, we, we do struggle, we need help. But what the Bible is saying is that in the same way that you feed yourself, when you are hungry, feed someone else in that same way when they're hungry. In the same way that you wanna be comforted and counseled when you are down, find other people who are down and counsel them in that same way. In the same way that you were glad and thankful that someone in their courage and kind of fear invited you to church with them, and for the first time you heard the gospel of Jesus and your life was changed forever. In that same way that you're grateful for that, show that to somebody else. Give yourself away for the good news of Jesus. Aren't you glad you know him? How about somebody else? 
give ourselves. Let us be a church that gives ourselves in love. That is why Paul can say with such confidence, the entire law is summed up in this one statement, this one act, this one word, love. There's a lot of commands in the Bible. Over 600, to be really clear. We don't have time for that. It's already noon. We're ready for sandwiches. So (laughs) let's consider the Ten Commandments. You shall not murder is love asking, how can I make your life better? You shall not commit adultery is love asking, how can I honor your sexual purity? You shall not steal is love asking, how can I protect your basic human rights that you are due, regardless of where you come from? You shall not lie or bear false witness is love asking, how can I honor your reputation as a person? The entire law summed up in love, which means we are free to love. You wanna experience freedom? You walked in today wondering, What does God want me to do this week? What is his will for my life? His will for your life is that you would give yourself away, that you would give yourself away in love. Give your knowledge away. Give it away to someone. Give your wisdom away, your your influence, your power, your money, your status, your family. Give it away in love to others who are without. That is basic Christianity because why? Jesus, the one who had it all, gave it all away in his love for you and made you brand new. That is the basic call of who we are. And if your Christianity hasn't set you free to do that, forsake that kind of religion. Be done with it. Some of you in here got decisions today about what you're going to do with your freedom. Are you going to give yourself away to people? Who are you going to call tomorrow? Who are you going to get coffee with? Who are you going to have lunch with? Who is God asking you to move towards so that you might give yourself to them in love? If you want freedom, that's the invitation, to give yourself away. Whatever it is you have, your time, your resources, your experience, give it away to someone. Freedom was never meant to end with you. Do you think Jesus saving you is all about you? You're part of a bigger story. It's a window, not a mirror. Look through it, and that's where you're gonna find actual freedom. You know the verse that Pastor Matt challenged all of us to memorize? Some of you are like, oh, forgot it already. It's okay, it's been a long time through Galatians. But it's Galatians 2.20. Anyone wanna come up and recite it? Get you guys ducking. My man back there looked away from me right now. Just (laughs) Galatians 2.20. Jesus loved me and gave himself for me. Listen, forget the rest of my life if my wife My family and my friends cannot say that of Fredo, that he loved us and gave himself for us. I'm doing something wrong if I got everything else right but love and giving it away to people. And you should too. You should not want your life if that verse can't begin to bear fruit in the things that you do and the people that you interact with and see on a regular basis. Because just for a moment, you guys, imagine with me waking up tomorrow morning, rolling your body out of bed and asking God, how might I lay my life down today for somebody else? Because that is what love does. Love says no to itself so that somebody else can say yes. Love dies to itself so somebody else can live. This is the invitation for all of us right now. You wanna be free, give yourself away because that's what free people do. Now, if that's the case, and if that's what we're free to, how do we actually live in this freedom? In other words, how do we actually see this practically in our lives, right? What's, what's Monday gonna look like? Here's the first of two things we need. You need to become a slave to Christ. I said that intentionally. You wanna be free, you wanna live in this freedom, become a slave to Christ. He says there in Galatians 5.1, for freedom, Christ set us free. In Galatians 5.13, brothers and sisters, you were called to be free. I bet you if we walked through the city of Riverside, how many people would describe Christianity with that word, free? 
How many of you, if, if you, I caught you on the way in the door and I said, describe your Christian life, would you use the word free? And maybe it's because we have forgotten that we are bound to Christ as Christians. Look what Jesus says in Luke 9, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life because of me will save it. You wanna discover who you are? You wanna figure out who you actually are? Die to yourself. You wanna have real life, Jesus says? Give it over to me. Let me be your master. And here's why he's a better master than all the rest. Every other master will tell you, you do the work and then you die for me. Jesus is the only master who says, I'll do the work and then I'll die for you. You can trust his chains, Sandal Church. He is a good master because he is the one who is worthy, full of praise, not conceited, but what does he do? He gives you his praise. The one who is worthy of praise gives it to you. It's a lot like this. Let's rewind. 2003, 2004, I'm in high school, I'm playing varsity basketball, I'm decent, I don't play a lot, I got decent height, right, for a Hispanic, I'm 6'3", but I probably get a peak right here. Uh, I don't jump very high, but my jumper, though, is nice. I got a nice jump shot. So I'm in the gym practicing, you hear the ball bouncing, sneakers going, the door's open, this light floods in, and in walks Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. I'm like, my Lord, there's Kobe Bryant right there. I love Kobe Bryant, I love MJ. And they spark up a conversation. Instead of wanting to play against me, they're talking about me. And along the way, I'm shooting, every shot's going in, because like I told you, I have a nice jump shot. And then Kobe looks at me and he says, you know what? Fredo, you got a great jump shot. Right, MJ? And MJ's like, yeah, man, that's a nice jump shot. You know what that would have done to me? As a young man, forget the coach. I don't care that I don't play. Why? Because Kobe likes my jump shot. The one who I idolize, the one who I praise, he praises me. He likes what I do. He's got respect for what I can do. That's what it means when you come to Christ and you are bound to him. You're safe in him. You are secure in him because the one who is worthy of praise sings his love over you. He sings his grace over you. That's what the Bible says. The one who is worthy of it all gives it to you. That secures you. And the closer we are to him, the more free we will be in our lives. So carve out time. Work to listen to him in prayer, to spend time in his word, to spend time with his people. You want to experience freedom every day? Get close to the one who made you free. Be in bondage to him, your whole self over to him, and watch what he does. It's going to be amazing. And lastly, though, we need to ask others, listen now, we need to ask others, how can I serve you? How can I serve you? Imagine us as a church where we came in, not biting, not devouring, not trying to take from each other, but giving back. Have you been asked that question here at Sandals Church? Have you slowed down long enough to be face to face with another person and they asked you, how can I serve you? How can I serve you in love? Listen, we are a big church, 11 church campuses all over the Inland Empire. More on the way, Lord willing, but we will be nothing if we cannot ask this question, how can I serve you? Imagine what your week might look like, your workplace, if instead of Christians dominating in our cities, we started by serving in love. We started by giving ourselves away to people. How would your family change? How would your neighbors respond to you if you had that kind of attitude of desiring to give something of yourself? out of your boring, mundane, simple life. That's what's beautiful about it. It's the simple things, you guys. It's the little things. It's the small acts of you asking someone, how can I serve you today? What can I do for you? Maybe you just take a step back and you ask them, what's your name? All right, what's your story? Tell me about yourself. And then go from there. Man, that, that is how freedom, that's how real freedom and love go viral when we give ourselves away, 
Imagine what Riverside would look like. Imagine what Lake Arrowhead, Sandals Church Lake Arrowhead, what would you look like? Banning, what would you look like? Montclair, Eastvale, East Valley, San Bernardino, Marino Valley, Woodcrest, Palm Avenue, Hunter Park, and Menifee on the way. What would we look like if we gave ourselves away in love, you guys? How would that transform you? As a church, man, things are pretty simple here. We don't have a ton of programs for you to jump into and make your life more busy. I mean, camp is today, right? Kids are leaving today in just a moment. But outside of that, we wanna see you here on the weekend. We wanna see you come in and not just take, but give back. We wanna see you serve. We wanna see you be in a community where maybe for the first time you go into someone's house and you let them ask you, how can I serve you? What can I do for you? Because if your Christianity hasn't led you to experience this, you need to give that Christianity up. That's not real. Because at the center of our faith, it's not philosophy, it's not science, it's not even ethics on how you should live. At the center of our Christianity, it's certainly not politics, it's a person. The person who was God in human form who came to live life for you and to die for you and to make you free in the way that he served you. Jesus, the Son of Man, came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. If that's not what's changing you, if that's not what you're following, then give it up today. And maybe for some of us, that's our next step. Some of you today need to repent of the ways that you have abused your freedom. You have sin to confess in this moment and real grace to take from God. Maybe others of you, man, maybe for the first time, Right now, you're considering real freedom. Where you're no longer held back by living for others, not even held back by living for yourself. And, but you're sitting there though, like, who, who am I though? Pastor Freddie, who am I to receive Jesus? But the real question is, who are you to reject him? Who are you to turn your back on this kind of freedom? Who are we as a church to look away from love in this way, you guys? This is the whole point of freedom, that we would smile, embrace it, and give it in love to somebody else. Drop judgments, drop assumptions. Walk in this invitation now. Let's do that as a church as we close in prayer. Father, as a church, we wanna draw close to you and we pray now that you would draw close to us. And for some of us, God, we confess our desire to live for ourselves. We confess sin to you, God, in the ways that we have abused grace. And we ask Jesus that you would come to us and set us free, free to live for you, to free to find out who we actually are in you, Jesus. And Holy Spirit, would you work in a way so that even as we just sang, that our chains would be gone and that you would empower us to live for other people, to give ourselves away for the good of others. God, we pray that you would make Sandals Church a church that can walk in freedom and give it away in love. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I'm Pastor Matt, super excited and thankful that you took time to watch any of the content on sandalschurch.tv. I would love to invite you to be a part of just those who support the ministry of Sandals Church. Look, I realize many of you go to other churches and I'm not encouraging you to take any money away from that, but any amount that you could give to help us continue to provide this content online for free. That's the heart of Sandals Church. And some of you, man, you're not a Christian, but you watch this and you're feeling led by God to give something. Any amount helps. It helps us continue to provide this content online and I just am so blessed that you would just take time to pray about it and all gifts are welcome. Thank you so much for helping Sandals Church teach people how to be real.